Hello everyone, so I just want to talk a little bit about 2.5 and 2.6. We talked about 2.5 in class today, that was the addition and subtraction properties. We'll talk about 2.6 next class, multiplication and division properties. And the reason why I wanted to do this is because I've noticed in the past that students have really, whenever they weren't sure what to write for a reason, they just sort of threw around addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And it really is important that we look at when we can use these and when you might use addition versus multiplication so that you're not just throwing those words around just for another reason when it doesn't really fit. Now, multiplication, we use when we'll see some sort of bisect, trisect, midpoint, some sort of word that tells us that we know that these are being split in half or in three. So multiplication and division, we'll really need to use these as keywords. If I don't have any sort of bisection, trisection, midpoint going on, I cannot use multiplication and division. So in this case, I've got the KO bisects my angle on the left. So now that I've got two congruent angles out of that. PS bisects my angle on the right, so I get two congruent angles out of that. And you've also told me angle one is congruent to angle two. We'll talk about this tomorrow more, but my overall conclusion is that the whole left angle is indeed congruent to the whole right angle. And the idea behind this as well, if one is congruent to two, and this one's congruent to one, and this one is congruent to two, realistically, if I played around with numbers, again, if I wasn't sure about a conclusion, I could make, say, one was 30, then two would have to be 30, then this one would have to be 30, that one would have to be 30, these would both have to be 60, and yes, they are congruent. So we multiplied at angle one and angle two, through a bisection to get the larger. With multiplication, we're going to go from something smaller to something larger, again, with some sort of bisection, trisection. Here, we know that this whole segment is congruent to this other whole segment. And that Z is a midpoint of XY, so that these are congruent. And E is a midpoint of DF, so I know that those are congruent. Notice I'm only marking things congruent for right now that I know for sure are congruent. Well, through our division property that we'll look at tomorrow, if XY is congruent to DF, and each of those are split in half, I know that my smaller pieces are also congruent, so I can say XZ is congruent to DE. And the idea, we know that our whole pieces are congruent, so if we're splitting those whole pieces into two or three congruent segments, then those congruent pieces must also be congruent, and again, that's the division property that we'll look at tomorrow. Here's an example of a problem. I know ABC is congruent to DBE. Well, like we looked at in class, I would be then be able to say angle ABD is congruent to angle CBE. And that's through our addition property. For both of those angles, we added this center angle. Remember, with addition property, we need to add the same segment or angle or congruent segments or angles. We can't just add things that we don't know are congruent. I know that angle is congruent to itself because it's the same angle. So if I add that same angle to both of my angles on either side, I know that my resulting angles will also be congruent. So with addition, you have to make sure that you're adding either the same segment or angle 
or congruent segments or angle. If you don't have that, you cannot use addition. Here we've got segment OK. Let's convert to segment PK. ON is congruent to PR. Here I have congruent segments, two sets of them. So a conclusion I could make is that NK is congruent to RK. And my reason would be through subtraction. Just like with addition, we need to have those congruent segments. We can also subtract congruent segments or the same segment. With addition, we're really looking to fill some sort of gap. And we've got to fill that gap with either, like I've said, those congruent segments or that same exact segment or congruent angles or that same angle. And we fill it through addition. With subtraction, we're looking for some sort of overlap and we subtract those congruent segments to get rid of that overlap in order to make our statements. So, watch out later on down the road when you're not just in this section for homework. If you're tempted to use addition or subtraction, make sure you either have congruent segments or the same segment or angles respectively. Or if you're trying to use multiplication or division, you do need that use of the word bisect trisect, midpoint, to get you to be able to use that multiplication or division property.